Welcome to Hard Hat Engineer. In this video, you'll learn about inspection and test plan. Also known as ETE, you will learn about the key elements of an inspection and test plan, also known as AP, and its importance in achieving the desired quality level in fabrication and installation during projects. I will explain this using an example of a piping inspection and test plan. Let's get started. First, let's understand the importance of the inspection and test plan in achieving project quality requirements and reduce the risks of failure. It ensures quality compliance by clearly defining each inspection stage and test. The IP ensures that work performed is in compliance with project specifications, standards and client requirements. Second thing, it minimizes rework by catching defects early. For example, during fit up or welding stages, so you can minimize costly rework or replacements. Third point, it tracks accountability. Roles and responsibilities are clearly defined in ITP, so each party knows their duties at each stage, ensuring accountability throughout the project. Lastly, IP facilitates documentation. By following IP, you can maintain a detailed record of inspections and tests that can be used for future reference, audits, or legal purposes. Now let's move to it. What is the Inspection and Test Plan? An Inspection Test Plan IP is a structured document used during the fabrication and installation process that outlines the systematic inspection and testing procedures required to ensure the quality and compliance of a project. The purpose of an IP is to provide a clear guide on what inspections or tests need to be carried out, by whom, and at what stages of a process. Here, you can see the inspection and test plan for piping fabrication and installation. As we are using piping as an example, the goal is to ensure that all piping components and assemblies meet the necessary quality standards, codes and client requirements. Now, let's look at key elements of IP, or you can say stages of IP, that will drive the entire inspection process. The first thing you have to see of any IP is the information block. In this area, you can see the project details including information such as project name, project number and client details. Scope of work that clearly defines what is being inspected or tested, material types such as SS, CS or other equipment or systems involved. It also mentioned things like AP number, revision number, area and unit if it is specific to a certain part of the project. Now let's see each column and the information it provides. The first column of our interest is the inspection activity column. It is a breakdown of the stages where inspections or tests will be carried out. The inspection process for piping systems involves several critical stages to ensure quality and compliance with standards as shown here in the ad. It begins with material inspection, where incoming pipes, fittings, valves and welding consumables are checked for conformity. This is followed by fit-up inspection, which verifies the proper alignment and joint preparation before welding. During welding inspection, various stages of the weld, including the road pass, intermediate pass, and final pass, are thoroughly examined. Subsequent non-destructive testing NDT, such as radiography or ultrasonic testing, ensures the integrity of weld joints. Once installed, the piping undergoes pressure testing either hydrostatic or pneumatic to confirm its strength and leak tightness. The process also includes surface preparation and painting inspection, where the surface is checked before painting and the paint application, thickness and curing are inspected. Finally, a final inspection is conducted to review the completed installation and verify the associated documentation. So. This first column is where you will find all the key stages of inspection that any product will go. If you want to learn more about piping components, you can check my full course. It is extremely affordable with lifetime access and comes with a 30 days no question asked money back guarantee. So don't forget to check. The link is given in the description. The next column is applicable documents and procedure. It specifies the standards, codes, specifications, procedure or criteria to be followed for each inspection or test. Material standards like a STM and a SMEB31. Three are widely used for process piping. 
defining the specifications for materials used in construction. Welding standards such as a SME Section Roman 9 cover the development of welding procedure specifications WPS and the qualification of welders, ensuring consistent and high quality welding practices. Column after that list the documents that give you acceptance criteria. Acceptance criteria are essential to ensure that all aspects of the piping meet quality standards and functional requirements. During material inspection, all materials must match the specified requirements and be free from defects to ensure reliability. For welding inspection, welds must meet visual quality standards and the results of non-destructive testing NDT should comply with the predefined acceptance criteria to confirm joint integrity. In pressure testing, the piping system must show no leaks when subjected to hydrostatic testing at 1.5 times the design pressure, demonstrating its strength and leak tightness. The painting inspection requires proper adhesion, the absence of blistering, and achieving the correct dry film thickness DFT to ensure effective surface protection and durability. So, you will get the acceptance requirement by referring to the documents mentioned in this column. As a proof of each stage of inspection, a report or record will be generated. This column indicates the report or record that you have to produce after each stage of inspection. Most of the time, you will see the format number mentioned here that is used to produce the stage inspection report. Fit up, weld visual and dimension check report, welding documentation, including welder qualification records WQR, welding procedure specifications WPS, and procedure qualification records PQR and DT reports, detailing results from radiography or ultrasonic tests. Pressure test reports document the outcomes of hydrostatic or pneumatic testing. Painting records include information on surface preparation, paint patch numbers, and dry film thickness DFT, etc. Columns after that show responsibility for the inspection. Who will do what and the level of involvement? For example, the contractor will be responsible for most of the inspection stage. Third party and client inspection will be limited to scope defined here. You can see various inspection codes such as H, W, R, etc. Inspection codes are used to define the level required during a process. H means hold point indicates that work must stop until the specified inspection or approval is completed. W means witness point allows the inspector to observe the process without interrupting the workflow. R is used for review. It focuses on reviewing records or documents for accuracy and completeness. Lastly, RW is random witness. It is a random observation conducted during the process as a predefined percentage of the total work. Here you can also see the sign of section. It is a space for relevant personnel, contractor, inspector, third party or client to sign off on each completed inspection or test, confirming that it meets the specified requirements. If you have any questions on the topic or want to request a video, please mention in the comment. This is the end of the video. Please like and share this video and don't forget to hit the subscribe button so you don't miss the next one. If you have a video topic in mind, drop it in the comments below.